Can Redis take the place of your primary database system? Can you replace your relational Postgres or MySQL database with Redis? Or your NoSQL, MongoDB, or Cassandra with Redis? Can Redis be more than just a cache? These are questions that you will be able to answer by the end of the video. Now stay tuned. This episode of the Backend Engineering Show is sponsored by my friends at Redis labs i'm gonna break this video into three sections first of all we're gonna define what really is a primary database what qualifies a primary database the second thing is does redis actually check the boxes of a primary database and then finally we're gonna go through features in redis that go beyond just a primary database i was personally surprised by by most of these features to be honest let's just jump into this video so first of all, what qualifies a database as a primary database? Uh, these are few features slash capabilities that a primary database must have in order to be considered uh, your uh, pillar uh, data store where you store your information. And these are not set on stone features. You can argue about these kind of features. But in my opinion, I think these features are what qualifies a database as to be your primary main database system. Atomicity. Individual statements in a transaction should all succeed or fail, thus provide a unit of work. Isolation. How isolated a given transaction is from changes made by other concurrent transactions. Durability. Writes committed by a transaction must persist on a storage medium that even if in case of a failure, we should see these writes and these writes should not be lost. Consistency. It's the spectrum by which a read transaction gets a consistent value from the database system. And I call this a spectrum because you can get a consistent value or you can get an eventually consistent value after a certain time. So your system might not be consistent at this time, but after a while, it will eventually converge and get consistent. So consistency, eventual consistency, weak, weak consistency, all of these fall into this category. Availability, the spectrum by which a read or write transaction get a successful execution from your database system. Again, availability is also a spectrum because you can configure this based on the cap theorem that I talked about. You can check that value right here. And finally, concurrency control. What happens when a transaction tries to change a value that actually had been changed since the transaction started? Do you block that change or do you allow it and fail later? Pessimistic versus optimistic concurrency control. Very popular two method. There is no right or wrong. I talked about this in video in detail if you want to learn about concurrency control here. Check it out. Now that we know some of the properties of a primary database, does redis actually check those boxes let's see atomicity yes redis is atomic you can start a transaction and you can do multiple statements multiple commands and then you can commit these changes and if there is a failure if you're using aof append only file redis will make sure to only commit all of these commands or none of them at all so redis is atomic isolation Redis uses the highest level of isolation, which is called serializable. So if you're executing two transactions at the same time, they will be serialized to be exactly after each other. Durability. Redis have something called append-only file durability format, which is very similar to the wall or write-ahead log or the redo files in other databases. And any command or transaction that you commit goes into this append-only file. And, and it's very fast because it's append-only. So you can achieve high durability with append-only file. And the good thing about Redis with durability is that you can configure this durability. It's almost like a spectrum. Unlike other databases, you can go with a snapshot durability that means all writes that have been happening to memory, which is very fast, will be flushed to disk. That snapshot of the memory will be flushed to disk asynchronously on the background every X amount of seconds. The power of that, your writes will be super fast because you're always writing to memory. And asynchronously, you're going to write and persist this to disk. Yeah, there is a possibility of failure, but this is something you can figure. Do you want strong durability? Go with AOF. If you want fast write, you go with snapshot. And you can actually combine those two as well. 
Just like other databases, you can configure Redis to be strongly consistent or eventually consistent. Strong consistency is done by a generally synchronous replications. That means you issue a write to a master node. That write does not commit until it commits to all other worker nodes. If you want faster writes, you do asynchronous replication. So as long as the master write succeeds, commit and tell me it's done. Asynchronously in the background, update your worker nodes. And as a result, yeah, reads might get a little bit of a staler version, but the writes are fast. It's a choice that you make. Speaking of consistency, it's worth mentioning that Redis Enterprise offers strong eventual consistency in active active clusters between data centers. When we use active active clusters, conflicts are inescapable since we are writing to both instances at the same time. And when we get conflicts, we are bound to be weakly consistent. Redis Enterprise offers conflict-free replication through predefined rules. And as a result, we get strong eventual consistency between those instances. And availability. Redis is available and you can configure this availability based on the asynchronous replication versus synchronous replication. If you chose strong consistency, usually you're not that available because if any write from the master to the worker failed, then you're really, really not available, right? Because you're going to fail the write, right? And on the other hand, if you chose eventual consistency, then yeah, your writes will always succeed as you are available, but you might get a little bit of a stale data. What are the mercy of the cap theorem? Finally, concurrency control. As I talk about many times in the channel, Redis is a simple single threaded database system. So there isn't really a true concurrency, but you can still prevent other transaction from changing something that you're about to read. Uh, through something called optimistic locks or optimistic concurrency control. And this is achieved by something called the watch command in Redis. You watch a value, you start your transaction, and if someone else committed a change to that value, your transaction eventually at the end, when you try to execute it or, or to commit it, it will fail, thus turning you, telling you to retry it. That's the, effectively the optimistic approach, right? There's obviously pros and cons to each approach, but yeah. It does support that. And starting from Redis version 6, I.O. in Redis is actually now threaded, while the core remains single threaded. And we have knew this even before Redis 6. Redis still uses multi-threading to take the snapshot of the memory and write it to the desk. And, and it seems now they expanded that to almost all I.O.s. Pretty good. Now that we know that Redis has the properties of a primary database, Let's go beyond just a storage system. And actually, I made a few videos talking about some of these features. You may know Redis for caching, but it's actually used for about 20 completely different things. Here are a few common use cases. Caching, obviously, it's a very fast in-memory write cache. So you can use it as a write-through cache, write-back cache. You can use it as sesh for session management. You can use it for Pub, sub, yes, it's very popular. I've seen many, 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 many companies uses, use Redis for pub subsystems. So just like that, you get features from a queue and a pub subsystem. So if you're looking for a pub subsystem, you can replace your Kafka or RabbitMQ with Redis. And speaking of Kafka, you can use Redis streams, which works like Kafka to ingest real-time data, for example, from an IoT devices to connect different microservices together. Uber actually uses Redis streams to replicate their data across data centers. They also obviously use Redis for other common use cases such as queuing and caching. I'll have a link to their video in the cards. A lot of other users use it for rate limiting, especially if you're building an API gateway or IP whitelisting because you're quickly looking at our IP and because it's a key value store, you're going to get it very fast. In addition, Redis is also used for real-time search, knowledge graph, real-time analytics, application metrics and forecasting, and real-time artificial intelligence. And all these use cases really are even possible because Redis provides more than 15 data structures and six modules, which work natively in Redis to make it all possible. This is why Redis is not just a primary database, but it's actually a multi-model 
multi-structure database. So here are a few data types that Redis supports. Strings, obviously, lists, sets, hashes, sorted sets, bitmaps, and hyperloglogs. logs. Another fundamental benefit of having these native data structures is they make it easy for engineers to store data naturally without transformation. For example, in Java, you have sets, arrays, hash maps, etc. All these types exist in Redis natively. However, if you're using an RDBMS, you'll need to morph and transform these data structures into tables. Not only that, you'll also need to access this data using SQL. This is as opposed to regular array, set, or hash map commands. This additional overhead is a result of the mismatch between how you think in objects in object-oriented programming versus relational databases tables. This is known as the object relational impedance mismatch. Martin Fowler has talked about impedance mismatch in object-oriented programming a bit. I'm going to reference his video in the description below. Another plus for Redis, because it's a very popular database, you have many supports for a lot of languages and SDKs as well. Another thing I love about Redis, and I talked about this in my previous videos about Redis, is the Redis binary protocol, which is called RISP. That, that protocol actually supports something called pipelining, which I talked about in my HTTP videos. Pipelining is the ability to send multiple commands at the same time on the same TCP connection. And instead of doing a request response, like, so hey, send a command, wait for results, send a command, wait for a result. So you get much, much better throughput as a result. So to end this video, we learned what a primary database is. We so that Redis checks these boxes of a primary database. We also seen that Redis use cases go beyond just a primary database. We've seen how Redis is a multi-model database. We've seen it reduce the impedance mismatch in programming with native data types. And finally, Redis Enterprise provides even more enterprise-grade features such as active-active, conflict-free geo-replication. Now I gotta ask the question to you guys, what do you think? Can Redis be used as a primary database? Let me know in those comments down below. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.